This is a talk I gave at the SMXL 2019 conference in Milan. My take on talks and presentations is that the deck I use is there to supplement what I say rather than replace me. Otherwise, I may as well just mail the deck in and stay at home and enjoy the sunshine. This, however, creates the bind that uh, when I share the deck afterwards, it is a tantalizing tale of hints and signs that leave my greater audience struggling to make sense of. So here is an experiment. I improvise a lot in my talks, so this is not going to be verbatim what I said on the day. And the Q&A session is obviously not going to be included, which is a shame really because the Milan audience was brilliant and the questions were absolutely excellent. It is, however, the gist of what I said recreated from memory just a day later. It will give you a flavor of the day since you weren't there and obviously I am dying to hear your own thoughts and comments so don't be shy, include them below. My talk was on link building. The SEO industry is built on links and link building. Those not offering link building services at some point start to obsess on how to get links. Link acquisition drives so much of the industry's behavior, as a matter of fact, that there is barely a conversation to be had on search and search engines without links and link building creeping in at some point. I give a lot of talks and since 2010, when I started to travel internationally, I've given hundreds of talks and presentations on search, search marketing, social media and social media marketing. If you take into account online interviews, webinars and live stream presentations, my talks probably number in the thousands. In all that time, the number of times I've spoken about link building is precisely zero. This is not because I don't think links are important. I understand that they are at the core of semantic search and that whether we like it or not, we live in an online link economy. But link building is a transactional activity. Transactional activities are a quid pro quo affair where you have to offer someone something of value in order to get something of value in return. In terms of link building, you will have to offer an exchange of links perhaps, an offer to pay if you're, not, if you're placing a link, or some other exchange of an equal perceived value to the person you're talking to. And all the while, if you're in the business of actually buying links, you have to consider that such an activity is frowned upon by Google's link building guidelines and it is likely to uh, get you a penalty. As such, link building in this fashion is not really sustainable. It costs too much time, too much money, and it really provides questionable returns. Even if it is successful in the short term, by allowing a website to acquire some high-value links somehow, in the long term it will provide ever-diminishing returns as high-value real estate on the web that is willing to link back is naturally exhausted or it becomes um, closed to a link request because a competitor got there first. This then means that link building has to resort to building lower quality links, many of which may either do harm to a website or, at best, offer little value for the time and effort and any cost that has been invested. This inevitable phase of the link building trajectory then results in the kind of activity that leads to many of us receiving emails like this one that is offering to build links to my website for a monthly fee and emails like this one which is trying to entice me to buy its link building service by naming some high value web real estate where links to my website will appear. There is an alternative of course to all this otherwise there would be no point to my presentation. But before we get to that it's worth casting a look at the state of search and its focus on links. In 2017 at the Brighton SEO conference, Google Webmaster Trends Analyst Gary Ilias said in his own unique way that if your website is seen across the social web, if the sentiment cloud associated with it is positive, then you're doing okay. 
Dwayne Forrester, who used to be senior product manager at Bing, said pretty much the same thing at the SMX West conference in 2016. And in that same year, at the Search Engine Land conference, Andrei Lipatsev, who is a search quality senior strategist at Google, said that when it comes to ranking a website, Google looks at three distinct and, in retrospect, entirely obvious things links, content, and rank brain. Rank brain is a machine learning algorithm that rewrites poorly understood search queries for search so that Google's search engine can better understand meaning and intent in some queries that are hard for it to actually understand. Rank brain introduces its own complexities and it is outside the scope of this talk. So I will focus instead on the two things that are pertinent and which we can actually control. And these are links and content. In their entirety, the comments of Ilias, Forrester and Lipatsev suggest that in an ideal world, theoretically, a website that has zero budget to link build, has no available manpower to link build and maybe even is pretty bad at link building, should still do pretty well for itself and rank high in search if its content is compelling enough and good enough for it to have a strong digital footprint across the social web and the sentiment graph. As it happens, I have a case study to share to that effect. This is the homepage of Derby.com. Derby.com is the web's preeminent free fitness resource. The site has tens of thousands of pages with workouts, fitness programs, science-backed articles with research findings, food recipes, meal plans and so on. It is funded entirely through donations and has a team of between 10 and 12 volunteers that help run it. For the last three years, the SEO, Search Marketing Brand Ambassador and on-page optimization job has been done by just one person. It's been done really, really badly. Now I know that because that one person happens to be me. The work I do for the website is so diverse and I have so little time to devote to each of the allocated specializations for the website that I have agreed to do that there are still a hundred, maybe 200 pages that consist of an image with a couple of lines of text, no description, no metadata, and no structured data of any kind. The site has zero link building activity, zero link building outreach, and obviously zero budget for links. Yet, despite this, a rudimentary link analysis shows that the site is not doing badly at all when it comes to links. Looking a little deeper in some of those links throws up this page of Wikipedia that explains what a burpee is. As an aside, a burpee is a brilliant exercise that targets the whole body and helps boost cardiovascular and aerobic performance. If you have never tried it, I highly recommend it. Anyway, getting back to link building, going down to the sources of the page, we see that there are two references and links that point to Derby.com. Wikipedia is linking to Derby.com as an authoritative source on the exercise called burpees. I drilled down to the pages that Wikipedia links to. Here's one and there is the other. They consist of a video in each case. By the way, that is Derby's founder, Nayla Ray, illustrating how to perform a burpee. Anyway, as you can see, the pages themselves consist of a single video file. No meta tags, no description, no headers. Each video is barely 10 seconds long. They have, of course, been widely shared across the web and on YouTube, each video has well over 100,000 views. So, the social component, digital footprint and brand sentiment around each of these pages is pretty much along the lines suggested by Ilias, Forrester and Lipachev. What can we learn from this? 
Is there a secret recipe we can take away and apply to a small website that is struggling to build links, has no budget or manpower, but still needs links in order to rank in search? Well, yeah, the answer is there definitely is. Like the best recipes, this one has just three short steps. Just like the best recipes, none of the three short steps I'm going to give you is an easy one to apply. Nevertheless, three steps it is. It consists of three elements that in retrospect appear blindingly obvious. The first one is content. Now you'll think, yeah, that is really obvious. I need brilliant content. But here's the thing. No, you do not. You need content that works for your audience. Remember, Derby's content that wanted two links from Wikipedia amongst what I suspect are dozens and dozens of other websites and hundreds of thousands of views and social media platform shares consists of just two very short videos with no explanation. This is content that simply works. Second, you need trust. Now, trust is key for any relational exchange to take place. How we gain trust revolves around four distinct stages. You need contact, you need perception, assessment, and the final one, connection. Derby, to keep using that example, is everywhere. It has a strong presence on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. It makes the contact phase really easy. It then understands the expectations of those who come to it and works really hard to exceed them. It does all this through content, the first of the three steps. But it uses the third step, which we're going to look at now, to actually help it succeed. Now, the third step, the third ingredient of the magic formula, is empathy. You will think of empathy as that hippie, huggy, feely thing, but it isn't. From a neuroscientific perspective, empathy is designed to help the brain do the one thing, the only thing, the brain is actually designed to do. And that is, accurately predict what is going to happen in the next moment. Everything we see around us, the social constructs we observe, the laws we have, societies we build, rules, regulations, countries, even a conference like this, all that complexity is the result of that one simple rule. If we know what is going to happen next, we can then accurately predict intent. We can understand need. We then know what to do in order to meet it. That's the end goal of marketing, search, SEO, branding, you name it. To get there, to make this accurate prediction, the brain uses empathy. The neuroscientific definition of empathy is the brain's ability to feel what others feel so it can understand their motivation. Understanding their motivation, it can better predict their actions. Content that is created from an empathic point of view never focuses on us. It always focuses on the audience we address in the most direct, most functional way possible. That kind of content helps generate a sense of trust. You can see how the three steps of the formula are not sequential. They are actually interlinked. One directly informs the other. You may have to start from the third before you even get to the first. Do that, however, and what you end up with is link building activity that is sustainable because you're not actively link building. If we think of link building, that is an activity specifically designed to serve you. Creating content using those three steps, however, is an activity that serves your audience. This raises the bar in content creation by changing the way we think about content, links, and the audience we serve. That, in turn, changes everything. Thank you.